Hi, Dr. Kat Fleece again from Central New Mexico Community College. We're looking here at video E of the urinary system, and this time we are going to focus on the second part of our nephron. The first part was the renal corpuscle made up of the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. This time we're going to take a closer look at the renal tubule. So let's for a moment just focus on this picture near the bottom right on your slide. Let's go ahead and enlarge it so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. And so just as a refresher, no matter what kind of nephron we're looking at, and you can see that this nephron sits in a slightly different position than that one, and we'll learn more about why that is and what they're called. But for now, recognize that no matter what kind of nephron we're looking at, they're always going to be made up of a renal corpuscle with then the renal tubule. So a renal corpuscle with then the renal tubule. And if we want to uh, list again the components of these structures, so we have our nephron, which is made up of our renal corpuscle, and you know by now that it's made up of the Bowman's ca capsule and glomerulus, and now we're going to focus on the renal tubule parts. And that's made up of our proximal convoluted tubule, which is directly connected to the Bowman's capsule, so illustrated here in primarily the purple color in both pictures. Secondly, we find something called the loop of Henle, which is a loop-like tube illustrated here, that dips into the medulla of the kidney. And then finally we have our distal convoluted tubule, which typically is going to meet up with our, uh, I'm sorry, I just pointed to the wrong one. Uh, it's going to be here, this reddish one. It's typically going to meet up with the renal corpuscle at the level of the arterioles, as you can see there, and you can see it over here as well. So if I have to place some arrows into to illustrate the flow of blood, and I'll use yellow, then we're going to see that blood is going to enter uh, into our arterial there, and we can't tell from this picture which one is afferent versus efferent, so uh, we'll assume it's the bottom arteriole, then the filtration occurs in the renal corpuscle here. We're going to see that the filtrate that forms is then going to go down the proximal convoluted tubule into the loop of Henle, back up to the loop of Henle, into the distal convoluted tubule, and that then will, of course, carry the filtrate, which is by now pretty much urine, into our collecting duct. And notice that these two nephrons and even more dump into our collecting duct. The collecting ducts, by the way, can also uh, merge together to form what is sometimes called a papillary duct, um, and then that leads to a papilla here. Not everybody uses the term papillary duct, um, but sometimes it's mentioned, so you'll come across it at times. Now we can focus on just the proximal convoluted tubules histology for a moment. I've mentioned before that these tubules are lined with simple, uh, simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. Now, this transmission electron micrograph uh, doesn't really make it very clear for you that it's simple cuboidal epithelial tissue, but I'm going to have you uh, accept that from me. What I, the reason for I, why I have used this particular image is because it nicely shows all these microvilli. And you know by now that if we have many, many microvilli, it's a way for any kind of a structure to increase the surface area. And why would the kidney at this level need to increase the surface area? Well, we're going to see that here a process called reabsorption occurs. So if this re represents the filtrate with the various substances, including water, but also um, nutrients as well as waste products and maybe even uh, all kinds of electrolytes, they're now part of the filtrate here, right, in the proximal convoluted tubule. Well, in this proximal convoluted tubules, uh, 
If I label this one with the letter N for uh, nutrient, almost all of the nutrients will now make it back through the epithelial layer to where our connective tissue is beyond that epithelial tissue. And that process where we see these nutrients in particular move from the filtrate back towards the, towards the blood, uh, we refer to that process as reabsorption. Now we'll learn much more about reabsorption in uh, a few videos later, but for now I want you to understand what that process is so that you can relate it to the fact that this particular part of our nephron, namely the proximal convoluted tubule, must have all these microvilli to make this reabsorption of nutrients as efficient as possible. Now to reabsorb these nutrients we require a lot of active transport, um, not just passive transport but also active transport and active transport of course depends on uh, the expend expenditure of ATP. ATP requires mitochondria to be able to go through cellular respiration so we also see many mitochondria inside of our um, simple cuboidal epithelial cells in the proximal convoluted tubule. So here again on this particular nephron we see here our renal corpuscle which is where the Bowman's capsule is directly connected to that proximal convoluted tubule made up of um, simple cuboidal epithelial tissue with microvilli and lots of mitochondria. That then is going to lead us into this straight loop with a descending limb and an ascending limb called the loop of Henle. And you can identify this as the descending limb because if we fill or if we illustrate where how the filtrate flows, remember it starts, it accumulates here in our Bowman's capsule, it's going to go down our proximal convoluted tubule, which means that the filtrate will go down this limb and then come back up that limb. So we refer to our limb that is most proximal to our convoluted tubule, so this limb right here, as the descending limb, while this one is the ascending limb. And of course, then we uh, migrate further up to the distal convoluted tubule, which eventually merges with the collecting duct. But to continue our focus on the loop of Henle, notice that the loop of Henle sits pretty far away from our renal corpuscle. And if we divide up the locations of the different regions of the kidneys, then you may assume that above my line here, all of that is going to be our cortex. So the cortex is where filtration occurs. Uh, and that is where we see most of our convoluted tubules, whether they're proximal or distal. On the other hand, the loop of Henle is located in the medulla. This is really important for you to keep that in mind. So filtration, which occurs at the level of the renal corpuscle, occurs in the cortex only. By the time we get to the loop of Henle, other processes are occurring called reabsorption and then we'll also add secretion. Okay, now if we look at the histology, then the, the descending limb is going to mostly have uh, simple cuboidal epithelial tissue, which is a continuation of your proximal convoluted tubule. But then notice that the loop of Henle gets really thin for a little bit, and that is then made up of simple squamous epithelial tissue. So that's where the actual hairpin occurs. And then the ascending limb that returns to the cortex is at first going to be, again, some uh, simple squamous epithelial tissue, but then it's going to continue forming uh, simple cuboidal as maybe even start to switch over to simple columnar, but primarily simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. But that simple cuboidal epithelial tissue that is then going to become part of our distal convoluted tubule as well is not going to have microvilli. And so here we see a histology slide, a cross section in this case of some of the um, tubules. And notice that we can differentiate in this area between our proximal convoluted tubules and distal convoluted tubules, uh, 
especially based on um, the, the size of the lumen. But if we had, I mean, if your eyes are used to looking at these slides, you'd see this better. But you, you noticed certainly on a, a micrograph I showed earlier that these uh, cells, these, and these epithelial cells of the proximal convoluted tubules have microvilli, which you, you really do not see at all here in the distal convoluted tubules. Now, these distal convoluted tubules, they're going to merge with the collecting ducts, and the collecting ducts is, are going to, again, have a histology that's very similar to the distal convoluted tubules, and the collecting ducts can be said to merge with slightly bigger papillary ducts. Like I've said before, some people never even mention the papillary ducts, and I'm sorry, ducts or tubes are, is, is underneath this image. Um, but these, these um, so you can argue that the collecting ducts are going to eventually lead to the papilla, or they merge to form bigger papillary ducts, which then form the papillae, the renal papillae. So in summary then, once we get to our collecting ducts, which is when we have pretty much our final form of urine, these collecting ducts could merge further to form papillary ducts. And of course, it's via these papilla here, these openings here, basically where we see the transition between our renal pyramids in the medulla, where all of our um, loops of Henle and also where our collecting ducts are located. Uh, there we see our renal papillae and from there then we are going to reach our minor calyces which become um, our major calyces and of course they then become part of the or they merge to form our renal pelvis that then leads into our ureters. Okay so that's the flow of our urine. Just as a quick reminder, I can't stress this enough, if we look at what is present in our renal pyramids, that's where we have our loops of Henle. I'm just going to keep it short and say loops of Henle, as well as our collecting ducts. All right. Um, on the other hand, and the renal pyramids are in the medulla, obviously. On the other hand, if we look in the renal cortex, that's where we find our renal corpuscles, and you know what they're made up of, plus all of our proximal and distal convoluted tubules, or most of, of the parts of the proximal and distal convoluted tubules. So what gives the pyramids that slightly striped look, and they haven't illustrated that on this image per se, but in a real kidney, when you slice it, these pyramids look actually pretty striped. It's all due to all of these uh, loops of Henle and collecting ducts that run pretty parallel to one another. So this is the end of this video. We'll move on to some more anatomy slash histology uh, related to the nephrons. We're not quite done yet with that.